So what's going on guys, today we are going to see how to shoot a flamethrower and how to create one with VFX graph. And the flamethrower can have several purposes inside the game, at least the mechanic itself, it can be used as a kneeling ability for example, or a poison ability or something along those lines. And I made a few variations as you can see. And all of this is exclusively available on my Patreon page, because that's how the channel survives, thanks to my patrons. All you gotta do is go to my Patreon page, I left the link in the description, in case you are interested. Alright, so with that being said, let's see how we can create a flamethrower. So as you can see I have my FPS character, nothing special, and the gun, which is actually from the asset store, from this turret, pretty cool. And first, let's not forget to go to the package manager, scroll down here and install VFX graph, as well as shader graph. Also don't forget to go to preference and down here in visual effects turn on experimental operator slash block so you can have access to more features of visual effects graph. And once that is done we can finally go ahead and with right click create a visual effects graph. Parent this to my FPS character and place it right in front of my flamethrower. Just like this, looking good. Once the flamethrower is in place we can press this edit button to open VFX graph. I'm gonna duck it right here, make some room and then the first thing we wanna do is actually increase the capacity. I'm going to increase to 256 and set a rate of only 32 for now. Then we can go down here and change the texture to a default particle that comes with Unity. And the most important thing is the motion of the flamethrower. We can control that in this set velocity random. We can increase the Z to around 5 and 7 for example and we are starting to see something. The X and Y will control the radius of the flamethrower and we can add values similar to this. Right, so we got the motion. But if we start rotating this, as you can see, the particles will not be left behind. And the way we can fix this is by clicking on this local button in the initialized particle to convert it to world, right? And as you can see it goes to the 0, 0, 0 position to the center of the world. We don't want that, we want this to be in the position of our VFX graph. To solve this we can use a set position, this one, and nothing changes because we need to feed the target position. And the target position is our VFX graph object in the scene. This object right here. And once we connect this to the set position, nothing really changes again. But that's because our set position is set to world. So we don't want to set the position in world space, we want to set it in a local space. All we need is to click in this button and it will convert this to local space. And now if we rotate this, we can see that the particles are being left behind, they basically keep on following their velocity vector. Awesome! Now what's happening is that the particles keep on having the same velocity vector. We don't want that, we want them to slow down near the end of their lifetime. The way we fix that is by going to the update particle, and the update particle keeps on updating our particles continuously, every frame by the way and add the set velocity over lifetime. And as you can see this is overwriting our previous values of the velocity. We can change that up here, we don't want overwrite, we want multiply. And we also want to change the mode to uniform. We don't want to control the x, y and z separately. Right, so now we have this curve, which is not useful, we want to instead have something similar to this, where it starts at 1, basically it doesn't change the previous value, but near the end we want this to slow down, but not that much. So let's push this up to around 0 0.85. And as you can see, they slow down at the end, maybe too much. Okay, that's better. Okay, so we have a nice motion of our flamethrower. Let's just change these particles to be in additive, by the way. And also turn on use soft particle. As you can see, if you look closely to the cube, the particles that get closer to the geometry, they will be faded. If I set the soft particles to zero, 
they will be abruptly cut by the cube. Right, so I'm going to leave it at 1 and I'm going to create a float so I can control all of the soft particles of the particle systems all at once. Connect it like this. And now let's actually control the size with a set size, which is going to be random, uniform, between 1.5 and 2.5. And nothing happens because the set size over lifetime is overwriting our previous values. So let's set it to multiply, the composition to multiply. Let's just change the curve of the size of a lifetime to something like this, where it doesn't need to start directly at zero. Okay, that's much better. Now, for the color, we can use a gradient. And I'm going to add one right here in the properties panel and then rename it. And as you can see, I already have done a gradient, but it's very simple to create one, and you can copy mine if you want. Then I'm going to connect it down here to the set color of a life. And it's looking nice, it's a cool gradient. Okay, now. Now let's move on to the next part, where we are going to need some flame textures. Nothing special, something very simple. I'm going to use Photoshop to create a new file with a good resolution, and then divide this in four. And it's going to be a flipbook of two by two. Now with the brush tool, in the first frame, I'm gonna start creating something very simple like this. And then with the erase tool, with a low opacity and low hardness, I'm going to remove some parts of this texture, ending up with a nice flame. And I'm going to repeat this process four times because I want four frames. So, four little flames basically, just like this. Once that is done, you can double click on the layer and add some outer glow. With that being done, I exported this texture as a PNG to my Unity project. And now the idea is very simple. We can copy this particle system we got here, copy and paste it with Ctrl C and Ctrl V. We can also create groups if you want with right click and then rename this so we can distinguish what's what. Right, so down here in the new particle system for the flames, we need to change the UV mode to flip book blend. And in the flip book size, we want this to be two by two, at least in my case. And let me just turn off the beams, by the way. Okay, so now I'm going to assign the flames texture that I created. And as you can see, it's repeating the first frame. So we need to add the set text index over life. And with this curve, if I set the last key to three, because it starts at zero, it's going to animate my flip book, basically. And now we can see the other frames, right? So it's animated and it's looking nice, but they are always with the same rotation. So in the initialize particle, we can use the set angle, which is going to be random, uniform, between minus 360 and 360 in the Z. And now we have randomness in the rotation, and it's looking quite nice. We just need some smoke. Luckily, it's as simple as copying and pasting these flames add. And down here, change the blend mode to alpha. Now I'm going to once again create a gradient, but this time for the smoke. And as you can see, I already have done one. It's basically some very dark orange and red. This smoke gradient, I'm going to connect it down here to the set color of a life. And as you can see, this happens. And what's happening here is that the smoke is being rendered in front of the flames. We don't want that. One way to solve that is by selecting our VFX graph that we have created in the project. And as you can see up here, we have this output render order. And we have three systems, but they all have the same name. And the way we rename these systems is right here in the output particle quad. So the smoke is going to be smoke AB, which is alpha blended. And the flames is going to be flames add, and then we got the beams 
at as well, right? So as you can see now we have their names. And we want to push the smoke up here because we want it to be rendered first. Then we want to render the flames and the beams, right? So they seem like they have disappeared, but they haven't. If we turn off the flames, we see the smoke. The only thing that's happening is that the smoke has the exact same rotation, the exact same lifetime, and it's overlapping with the flames. Right, so one way to solve this is, for example, let's set the flame size to be a bit smaller, like between 0 0.8 and 1.8. For the smoke, we can open up the range of the rotation between minus 720 and 720. Right, and now as you can see, they don't overlap anymore. Cool. Now, one thing that's happening and we don't notice is that if I stop this and play again the flamethrower, as you can see, it takes a while to reach the cube. And the flamethrower spits flames faster than this. So, what we can do is in the set velocity of the flames, we can increase the Z to 10 and 15 and decrease the lifetime by half. And do the same with the smoke. Right, so now as you can see the flame throw has much more throwing power, basically. It's stronger. We just need to increase the rate of the flames to something like 64. What we can also do is increase the size of the smoke a bit more and decrease just a tiny bit the, the lifetime of the flames and increase the lifetime of the smoke. Because we want to see some smoke at the end, it looks nice. Finally, we can turn on the beams, but as you can see, they are quite strong. So we can use a multiply color and, and multiply it by something like 0 0.2, so they aren't that strong anymore, at least the color. Right, so it's looking nice. Let's just increase the velocity of these beams and also decrease the lifetime so it matches the flames. Okay, so we have a nice flame thrower at this point. It's looking really cute. Now, to shoot these flames, it's very, very simple. I have created a script that is attached to my FPS character, as you can see. And in this script, I have a public visual effect flame thrower. And in order to use visual effects components, we need to add using Unity Engine.VFX up here. Right, once we have done that, we want to, in the beginning, in the start, we want to stop the flamethrower. And then in the update, we check if we have clicked the left mouse button, so we can play the flamethrower. And once the left mouse button is up, we stop the flamethrower. Right, it's a very basic script. And once you have attached the script to the FPS character, don't forget to also assign the flamethrower. Last thing we need to do is in the initial event name, we need to remove this on play, otherwise it will start immediately shooting the flame thrower. Right, so as you can see, if I press the left mouse button, it shoots the flames, looking nice, it has a nice power. And once I stop clicking the left mouse button, the flame thrower stops shooting. And that's it. Very simple, looking very nice. One last thing that you can do is add some stretched particles if you want. All you need is to copy the beams add, increase the velocity, increase the maximum velocity to 25 and then add the position circle with a very small radius like 0 0.2 the lifetime is also very small like 0 0.5 and 1 and then what really matters is that you change the face camera plane to be a long velocity and then lastly you can use the set scale with a random set to uniform and insert these values in the X and Y so the particles are stretched. And that's it, we have some stretched particles. We can remove this multiply color. If you want to increase the spread, you can increase the X and Y of the set velocity to be between minus 2 and 2. And that's it, we have some nice looking sparks in our flamethrower. Right, and this is 
the basic flamethrower you can extend these you can add more things you can create different flamethrowers as i have done so as you can see it is a little bit versatile once again all of these variations are available on my patreon page your support really means a lot to the channel to me and you can get access to even more visual effects that you can use in your projects and in your games as well so that's it i just want to say thank you to all my patrons that have been supporting me you guys are awesome and a special shout out goes to the super mega patrons which are adriano bottega alejandro angel r dev show james corner marble amantas goblin plague hero syndrome the game himara spc invention games josh mccormick Ram and Yola, Ken Lee, Makozi, Marco Rossi, Maurice Mary Stromer, Maxim Chaos, Nikolai Slodus, Psychotech Studios, Robin Boudreau, Steven Melton, TK, Xor, and Gary Kiegesarian. So that's it guys, I really hope you have enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.